Can men really become gods? When I talk to Latter-day Saints on the street, I will sometimes ask them this question, and I get a variety of responses. Some people say, of course you can't. God alone is God. And yet others say, well, yes, Heavenly Father wants us to be just like Him. So which is it? Historically, the LDS Church has taught that men, by performing sacred Mormon rituals, can become gods. As LDS President Lorenzo Snow once said, as man now is, God once was, and as God now is, man may become. And believe it or not, the Bible actually has a lot to say about this issue. In this video, I want to walk through why the Bible explicitly rejects the doctrine of LDS exaltation. Doesn't God want us to be like him? Yes, of course he does. God wants us to display all the godly attributes that he has commanded of us. Things like love, holiness, kindness, mercy. We're even commanded to be holy even as God is holy. But hold on, is imitating God with our good works the same as being like God in every possible way? No, of course not. There are a whole host of things that necessarily distinguish us from God. For example, we as humans change. Every morning we wake up a little bit different than the day before. But God says of himself, for I, the Lord, do not change. A changeable being like you or I can never go back and now become an unchangeable being. Once we've changed, we are no longer immutable, that is, unchanging. Additionally, the Bible tells us that we are created beings. We had a beginning, but it also tells us that God is uncreated. Moses writes in Psalm 90 that from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Elsewhere, scripture tells us that we learn things. We receive gifts. Consider the gift of salvation. That was something given to us that we didn't earn or deserve. But Romans 11 says of God, for who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? No one has ever counseled God or given a gift to him because he is the most high God. No one is like him. You and I, we can never become untaught beings. We can never become people who have never received a gift. God alone has never been taught. God alone has never received a gift. You and I are not like him in these kinds of categories. We can never go back and become untaught people. We can never go and unreceive every gift we've been given. The truth is you and I, we've been taught by other people. We've received gifts. God's never been taught by another. He's never received a gift from another. And in this way, we are distinct from God. All of this simply means that God created us to share some of his attributes, but not all of his attributes. Now, all of these issues I've brought up are somewhat peripheral issues. So let's take a look at what the Bible clearly and straightforwardly says. God tells us that no God was ever formed before him or ever will be formed after him. Isaiah 43, 10 says, Before me no God was formed, nor shall there be any after me. He says that he is the first and he's the last, and there's no God other than him. Isaiah 44, 6, Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me there is no God. But get this one, God even says that he doesn't even know of any other gods. Isaiah 44, 8, is there a God besides me? There is no rock. I know not any. Now, let's think about this for a second. Let's say you were exalted to Godhood someday and you wrote scriptures for your spirit children. Would you be able to honestly say that you don't know of any other gods? At a minimum, you would at least know Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ. So to say that you don't know of any other gods would be dishonest. God revealing to us that he doesn't even know of any other gods tells us a couple things for sure. Number one, that God never could have been a man who had his own heavenly father. It also tells us that Jesus Christ is not a separate exalted being. And thirdly, it tells us that God is not aware of his spirit children becoming exalted to godhood. God doesn't stop these statements here. He even says that he will never give his glory to another. Isaiah 42 verse 8, 
I am the Lord that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to carved idols. God reveals that he didn't save his people for their sakes, so that they could be exalted, but for his own glory. Isaiah 48 verses 9 through 11. For my name's sake, I defer my anger. For the sake of my praise, I restrain it for you, that I may not cut you off. For my own sake, for my own sake, I do it. For how should my name be profaned? My glory I will not give to another. He even declares that in the end, he alone will be exalted. Isaiah 2, 17. And the haughtiness of man shall be humbled, and the lofty pride of men shall be brought low, and the Lord alone will be exalted in that day. This issue is not complicated or confusing. God is very clear. There only ever has been and only ever will be one creator God. The gospel of Christ is not that men can become gods, but that God became a man and that all who trust in him for eternal life will not suffer under the weight of eternal judgment, but can dwell in God's kingdom for eternity. So turn to Christ, repent, cast yourself on his mercies, and be saved. The first chapter of John's gospel says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Thanks so much for watching this video. If this was helpful for you, uh, be sure to like and share this video on social media. Uh, leave any questions you have down below in the comments. And I'm about to put on the screen some other videos we've done on this topic. If the, the issue of exaltation is something you'd like to study further.